I would say it's pretty hard to describe who Jesse is. He's bald. He's an instrument builder. He's a visual artist. He's a jazz drummer. I built this uh, last year uh, for my kids, and uh, I like to spend as much time up there, I think, as they do. I like to work up here. So, come on up. So, this is our tree house. For me, you know, being in trees and spaces like this, is a, they're good places for the imagination. I had a maple tree in my grandparents' house, and um, I spent a lot of time in that tree. And I didn't have a tree house, mind you, but I spent a lot of time up there. I come out here and I write music, and um, I sometimes like to play music in the space. Years ago, somebody asked me to describe Jesse, and I said, you know, you could give two pieces of paper to Jesse, and he'd make a wonderful piece out of that. I just happened to incidentally mention that to Jesse one day, that I described him that way, and he sort of got this sheepish look on his face, and he says, you know, I actually do have a piece for paper. <laughs> In some ways, the more banal the object, the, the greater the challenge. Part of the impetus behind the work that I do is a kind of sense of curiosity about the world and the things around me. This is kind of cool what's happening with the, with the leaves too. It's beautiful. And also a sense of discovery, you know, looking for, you know, new discoveries in the objects and the spaces and the things around me. And ultimately, I hope anyways, in my own case, I, I'm, I'm looking for a kind of sense of wonder. He has such a fine ear for sound and such an inventive and creative way of working with sound of any instrument. This is a lithophone. I think I paid $10 for the, this stack of marble tile. And as I was carrying it out to the car, I, I dropped one of these pieces that was three feet long and it broke into multiple different pieces. And I noticed that each piece had a kind of different pitch, right? So I thought, well, I wonder if I can tune it. And so I, I started cutting and tuning this marble. I've never met anybody who does all the things he does. I don't know any drummer that, that, that has a show at Nathan Phillips Square where it's all ice. and he transported all the ice from Ottawa. And he burns his jacket, because he has to melt his blow torches, and he, he burns his jacket because he has to get tone out of it. I don't know anybody like that. You look at the trunk of a tree and then you see the many branches coming off. And Jesse has a really powerful artistic vision. I've seen him add more branches to the tree, shall we say. So I thought it would be interesting to actually, you know, get a bunch of bird calls, bird calls that one would make to imitate various birds, and uh, try to e explore those musically. So this is something I've just started. It can get pretty ugly, but <laughs> I'm kind of interested in that, actually, trying to make it less pretty.
For me, a big part of creativity is, is really trying to hang on to that and, and foster and nurture that sense of curiosity and discovery and wonder that is innate in every human child. <laughs> I think that what he's done with found objects is amazing. If you get a chance to see his exhibit, it's, it's really astounding. His found object work, it's sort of a celebration of eccentricity. <laughs> I started collecting um, little plastic tabs that come on like bread bags and milk bags. So I collected quite a few of them and then so eventually I thought, well maybe I can find one with every date of the year printed on it in terms of their expiration dates. And so that was where this idea for this piece I did called Keeping Tabs, where I basically created a calendar using these bag closures, these milk tabs. This is something that I have done for as long as I can remember. I'm using found objects in uh, my creative practice. This is something that pretty well most kids, or all kids, really do sort of instinctively. And, uh, but unlike most kids, I just never stopped doing that. So I just kept you know, working with the things around me and trying to find out what secrets they might hold in terms of you know, sounds that I could elicit from them. So even in a space like this, like you can, I mean, there's lots of different surfaces to, to play with. I think that you know, any space can be musical, even if we just stop and and, and listen for a minute. Oh, we hear a lawnmower in the background. From my perspective, anyways, creativity is uh, is really a, a birthright of you know being a human. I meet a lot of adults, you know, and they ask you know what I do, and I say, oh, I'm a musician, a composer. They say, oh, wow, I love music, but. You know, I, I have no musical talent, or I'm not very creative. For me, it's quite a sad thing. You'd be surprised at the number of adults I meet who were in choirs when they were a kid, and the choir director told them to just mouth the words. It was scarring for them. Our education systems at every level really needs to, need to be finding opportunities and ways to encourage kids, to tell kids and reinforce not just kids, but everybody, that yes, you are creative, and yes, you do, you know, you, you, you are musical, everyone is musical. So this question of, you know, what's my favorite, you know, uh, of my own pieces, the next one is kind of the, the one I'm most interested in, uh, whatever I'll be working on next.